Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3A of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 71 and the question is number 4. It reads, a particle is projected from a point on a horizontal plane with initial speed 10 i hat plus 35 j hat meters per second. And we're asked to find a big load of things, the first one of which is the maximum height above the, above the plane. Alright, so of course we have our usual gravity, the xy plane and our unit vectors. So to sketch the motion, we draw our velocity time diagram, we draw our initial velocity vector u, and we know that u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. We know of course that u is not just taking up one dimension, it's taking up two, so it is a resultant vector, and we need to resolve that into its component unit vectors, one facing in each direction, only these ones, u sub u sub y and u sub x, like that. So we know that u sub x is equal to 10, because we're given that, and u sub y is equal to 35, like so. And we'll say that we also have an angle of theta, just for the crack as well. So the next thing to do, of course, is to do our u vast. So I'm going to say this is the x direction, y direction, What do we know? We know this is 10, this is 35, g, and 0. This is <coughs> t, this is t. And we're asked to find the maximum height. Once again, as per normal, if you're firing a projectile, upwards like your biro, <coughs> you should come up, it'll slow down, it'll stop, and it'll come back down. So the height at which you have your maximum height is, uh, or the, the condition for maximum height is that v sub y here is equal to 0. So v sub y is equal to u plus at, so it's 35 plus gt. Remember we always have plus g, whereas the book will say minus g and that equals to plus 9.81. I have it swapped. This here is 10 of course, and this here is 10t, for the same reason as question 1, 2, and 3. And this is ut plus a half at squared. So it's 35t plus a half a gt squared. So let's use our condition that v sub y is equal to 0, is equal to 35 plus gt. Therefore t is equal to minus 35 over minus 9.8 is equal to 3.56. So let's say 3.6 seconds like that. And we're asked, <coughs> excuse me, we're asked to find the height. So just plug that 3.6 into s sub y. So it's 3 point, or 35 times 3.6 minus 4.9 which is a half g. And that's multiplied by t squared. giving me a height of 61.3 meters, like so. Now, is that correct? We're on question four. Just one moment. Now, I check my solutions. Uh, where is the answer to this now? Fine. Okay. Excuse me. We're actually asked to find the times. So let's just, yeah, so this part here is correct. That's of 3.6 is correct. I just did the distance anyway, so that is also correct. And the, we're next to find the time. The next part is we're asked to find the time uh, when the velocity is 10 i hat plus 10.5 j hat. So it's 10 i hat plus 10.5 j hat, so that, that equal to t. So we'll say v is equal to 10 i hat plus 10.5 j hat, like that. Of course, this one isn't going to change, but this one here is changing, like so. So you want to find the time at which 35 plus gt is equal to 10.5. So we'll say v sub y. Is so therefore t is equal to 10.5 minus 35 over minus 9.81, and that's equal to... 
minus 2.49, so say that's 2.5 seconds. Is that correct? So that's, yeah, that's correct as well. And finally, we're asked to find the time when the velocity is 10 i hat minus 10.5 j hat. So we're told that v, 10 i hat minus 10.5 j hat. So the procedure is the same, except this time this is minus 10.5. All right. So let's just do that. It's reasonably straightforward. So 35 plus gt is equal to minus 10.5. Therefore, t is equal to minus 35 minus 10.5 over minus 9.81. That's equal to... That's equal to 4.58, so say 4.6 seconds. Alright, so let's just check that. Well, 3.57. Part three. Oh, yeah, that's part three. So it's forty-five divided by nine point eight. Four. Yeah, that's that correct. And the final part is show that the time in part one is exactly halfway between the times in part two and part three. So let's put it this way: What's the time in part one? Uh, I just took a note of this here. Just one moment. So the part time in part one was equal to thirty-five over 9.8 the time in part 2 now, of course these are obviously not in, uh, in decimal form was equal to 24.5 over 9.8 like so in part 3 was equal to 45.5 over 9.8 So we're asked to show that the, the time in part 1 is exactly halfway between the times in part 2 and part 3. So if you look here, if you just write them, ignore the 9.8, that well, you can keep the 9.8 if you want. But if you look anyway, you have 35, 25, it's essentially 35, 25 and 45. So 25, 35, 45, like so. 25 is associated with part 2, 35 of part 1, 45 of part 3. So as a result, you can see part 1 is halfway between part 2 and part 3. So that was that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.